ever been in a fight that crashes and burns far too often? You know how to run it, but you have no clue how to organize it? Do you wish you had an easier way to show someone where to go? Or do you just want to be a shiny marker on the map and have a very confused posse of players surrounding you? Today we'll go through everything about the commander tag, how to get all types of tags, how to function and function successfully. So what's a commander tag and how is it different from a mentor tag? A mentor badge, also called a mentor tag or apple, is a red marker a player can have over their position on the map and an apple icon above their head. This can be started by hitting level 80 and having the full game unlocked via purchasing an expansion, whether this be Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire, and or End of Dragons once that's out. This unlocks the mastery track for whatever expansions you've bought as well as Corteria's. The choice to use the Apple Tag comes with the completion of Pact Mentor in the Pact Commander Mastery Track. This is great for signaling there's something noteworthy on the map and you get the name Mentor in front of your name in chat. But the internal organization with this tag is almost non-existent. It's now often used as a placeholder for a Commander Tag until that player has the funds to actually buy it. You can activate this by typing slash mentor in your game chat window or by clicking the mentoring button in your party interface. Once you earn it, you'll access the commander tag from here too. A commander tag is a special, somewhat customizable icon with up to 18 different color and design combinations that allows the player to create and more importantly, take charge of much larger groups called squads. You have access to glowing markers you can place, different squad sizes for different content, multiple ways to organize your squad, and more that we'll get into later on in the how to function section of this guide. These are often referred to as Doritos by the community. How do you get this tasty snack? Before you even look into how to get to the tag vendor, you need two things, 300 gold and 250 badges of honor. The gold can be earned in tons of different ways and there are dozens of different how to earn gold guides on this platform. I'll link the ways I use most in the description below. The badges of honor are a currency earned in World vs. World. More often than not, a lot of players have earned at least some of this just by getting certain items from a guild vendor as drops from chests called World vs. World supplies, or given by progress chests from potions that give World v. World track X. If you're not at your 250 yet, go into World vs. World by clicking the tower icon at the top left of your screen. Enter any of the four maps on the left and look for a tag currently running on that map. Join them and participate until you earn the 250 you need. So you have your currencies. What's next? How do you get to the thing that gives you the tag? Regular commander tags are easy. You just find a vendor in the world, talk to them, hand over the goods, and it's yours. These are vendors in the Black Citadel in the Imperator's Core, in Divinity's Reach on the Duena High Road near a waypoint by the bank, in Holbrock in the Hall of Legends, in Lion's Arch in Fort Mariner right behind the Fractal Gate, and in the Mists also known as World vs. World, Legendary Commander War Razor in both the Borderlands and the Edge of the Mists will be there. He's a pretty big and easy char to find. The Catmander tag, a cat head version of the regular icon, is bought from the yellow or blue Catmanders in World vs. World, either from the vendors in a jump puzzle or from Penelope the Unconquerable in the Armistice Bastion, a sanctuary that requires a passkey bought from the gem store when available. The jump puzzles are in the green and blue Alpine Borderlands on on the upper left hand side of the map and also behind the Odell Academy in the Desert Borderlands. Either puzzle vendor works, you do not need to do both. If you already have the regular commander tag by the way, the Catmander tag will be half the gold price and still 250 badges of honor and vice versa. Now you have the coveted pay attention to me arrow. What do you do with it? To start, just open up your party UI and select Create Squad. This will default you to a tag that you can then change by clicking the icon in the bottom right hand of the squad UI and choosing a different color or even design from there. You have 18 options if you've bought both, 9 regular and 9 cat icons all in the same colors. If you have one or the other, you'll only have one set or the other. You'll have some other options within this UI as well. Ready check. This only appears when you have at least one other person in your squad. You can pop up a window into member screens asking if they're ready or not. They hit ready to set a green check mark on their name in the UI. If they don't in time or they hit no, they'll set a red X instead. They can just fix this by clicking the red X on their name once they are ready. You can also disable this early by clicking the ready check button again. Edit squad message. This is a bulletin board new members can see when they join where you can easily explain guidelines, what the squad is for, instructions, status, or whatever you need and when updated, it'll pop back up in each member's chat window. This can have linked items, but this also does have a 250 character limit. This is great for putting out basic information you can just refer members to instead of typing or copy pasting in chat every few minutes. Raid mode. It is what it says it is. This is used for, you guessed it, raids. And also strikes. Those are basically beginner baby raid bosses that can fit up to 10 people. 
Lock all subgroups. First of all, subgroups. You can right click on a member in the squad UI and hit create new subgroup and it makes a new separate group within the squad. People can move themselves by clicking and dragging their name in the UI to a different group or they can right click and create new subgroup on their own name. Selecting lock all subgroups prevents anyone but you from moving people or creating new ones. If you have a plan set up for your squad for an event, guild missions, world versus world, etc., make sure to have this selected so people can't move themselves around on you. Allow members to send invites. Literally just lets anyone invite other people. You decide how much control you want to give members in whatever you're doing. Private squad. This just hides your tag from anyone outside the squad. Allow uninvited players to join. You have three options. Yes, anyone can join. Yes, with approval, and no. The first one lets anyone just right click you, your tag, your name in chat, or type slash SQ join and freely join the squad. The second lets people do that, but with you approving or canceling the request instead of them just auto entering. No just means they have to have an invite from you or a member first. View as grid. You can either view the squad as a grid or bar system. Leave. Literally just lets you leave. Be wary though, if you advertise your squad in the LFG tab, you will also accidentally leave the squad up in the LFG if you don't remove it first. Do not do this. It just leaves what looks to be an active squad in LFG that people will keep joining not knowing that the commander has just up and left. Clean up your mess. Don't leave dead squads in the LFG. Squads that have already reached the max 50 or 10 if set to raid squad will auto remove themselves from this. Things outside the obvious UI. You can broadcast to your squad. This is the keyboard version of a megaphone. If used properly, it can be used to get time-sensitive information out and in members' faces and keep them in the loop. If used incorrectly, you'll just irritate your members and they'll ignore them if not just leave entirely. You can either broadcast to the whole squad or to a specific subgroup. Typing slash squad or slash D in this will broadcast to the whole group and it defaults to this anyway when just typing. Slash subgroup or slash SG will broadcast to just the commander subgroup and slash insert whatever number here to broadcast to that specifically numbered subgroup. Group. Markers. We already have the four map directives by hitting Alt and Mouse 1 on your main map to open a menu for those four, but you can also place glowy symbols that have a beam of colored light above them. Only those in your squad can see these. These are in order. 1. A lime green arrow. 2. A purple circle. 3. A red heart. 4. A blue square. 5. A darker green star. 6. A blue spiral. 7. A magenta triangle, and 8. A yellow X. You can mark both locations and objects with these. Locations are set by using Alt, Insert, 1 through 8, and having your mouse be where you want the marker. Objects are set by hitting Alt, Shift, 1 through 8 after having selected the object. Alt, 9 clears all location markers, while Alt, Shift, 9 clears all object markers. Want a super obvious singular marker? Place them all in one spot. It'll constantly shift between all the colors and create a bright strobe effect. Layers count as objects, by the way, so if you need to mark someone, like as a leader of a subgroup, you will mark them as an object. Lieutenants. They can do everything you can except move or kick other lieutenants, change your squad settings, lock or mess with locked subgroups, or do a ready check. Any lieutenants you promote will have a small dual downward arrow symbol on their place in the squad UI. They can also assign shared participation, more on this later on in the world versus world section. Ever in a situation where you don't know how to run a certain event? Your buddy does, but you're the one with the tag? You can let your buddy borrow your tag essentially. Just make them a lieutenant and do any subgroup locking or ready checking they need and stick to them. It also helps if you mark them with an obvious colored symbol like mentioned earlier. Just keep in mind anyone not in your squad cannot see this. They get to lead and you get to just sit back and be a shiny beacon with almost zero responsibility. Supply reports. This is technically a world versus world resource, but it has its applications in PvE as well. A supply report is basically seeing what event or map specific interactable each player has in or out of squad. Typing slash squad info shows you the amount of that interactable each individual is carrying and all squad specific info regarding that. Typing slash supply info will show you the same, but all adjacent allies instead. Both will show you the total supply your squad or allies are holding altogether. This is used for supply in world versus world obviously, but it also has a use in places like Triple Trouble, a PvE world boss that has a similar interactable mechanic where you need at least a minimum number of something to do the war mechanics. Keeping this in mind in both areas of the gameplay can be the difference between being confident you can do something successfully or not and having a backup plan if you do fail, and then failing often or succeeding by chance while not fully understanding the hows and whys. World v World Specific Mechanics 
Tags. You can't see the other team's tags, just your own on the map you're on. So anyone on your server and the server you're paired with can see each other's tags when in a map with each other, but anyone outside that team can't. So you don't ever have to worry about the other two teams seeing your tag and where everyone is. Shared participation. The amount of people you can do this with will depend entirely on the amount of people in the squad. You can ensure any scouts you have in other maps get the same participation everyone else actively running with you gets. It rewards a small amount of people for helping out in other ways that may not let them enjoy the immediate fight. You get one shared participation slot for every five players in the squad, with a maximum of ten. People promoted to this have a sword and triangular shield icon in the squad UI and are given this the same way you promote lieutenants. These scouts can be in any other Borderlands map looking for more to do for the squad or keeping an eye out for any immediate events that need attention. They have to be in world versus world to benefit. So you got the currency, you got the tag, and now you know the basics of using the tag itself. That's it, right? Nope, we still got a third to go. Buckle up because it's time for leadership training. What's expected of a commander? Is it just being a signal or running in front? What if I don't have anything to offer like banners or food like some other commanders? Honestly, in PvE, it depends on the event. In some, you're expected to know the event you're tagging up for and just be able to answer basic questions. And in others, you are expected to know every little hidden detail, timer, what the other groups in the event have to do, their mechanics, etc. In World vs. World, it's a whole other beast. No matter what sized squad, you're expected to keep everyone engaged and in constant search for action to get people to and keep up that tier 6 participation. You're expected to keep an eye on the entire map, seeing what belongs to your team, what needs defending, what's ripe for the taking, how much supply you have as a whole, and what's needed for any dailies. This could be any mixture of capturing objectives and fighting. You need to make sure your subgroups have a healthy balance of DPS and healing, plus any additional bonuses like boons or protection for siege and squad mates. You're also expected to have all of the major siege blueprints and place them down for your squad to build if you're intending on going on the offensive. For both areas of play, whatever banner and food buffs you can offer just adds to the experience and your squad will greatly appreciate it, but it isn't required. How to be a successful and memorable commander, aka how to not suck and ensure people will still want to run with you again. 1. Don't kick everyone from a squad after what you're doing is finished. Unless you're just a taxi for an event and players need to join up with a squad that's actually organizing the event, you don't need to kick people. If you are that taxi, then you warn people and give them the why before you kick them. This is generally seen as rude and people like to talk to squad mates and thank each other or even thank you after a successful run. If you do want to leave before everyone's gone, just make sure you didn't leave the squad in LFG, say goodbye, and leave. 2. Keep your squad engaged and informed. Talk to them, let them know what's going on, and answer whatever questions you can. Having an indicator you purposely went out of your way to get and show you know what's going on means people will ask you questions in hopes they can get a player answer or a point of view on something, rather than just going to the Wikipedia page and hoping they find the information they need without needing to jump down a collection rabbit hole. Some commanders have their own ways of getting people to keep paying attention or stay engaged, like dad jokes, or having a persona if their character is purposely made to look like another character out of game. This makes you stand out and squad members always seem to enjoy the extra fun. 3. Having copy pastes or copy pastas as we call them. These are handy for wordy explanations, skilled recruitment messages, or general info you just don't feel like typing every single time or if you have that list of dad jokes or information edited to match a different persona. I have a whole discord just for my personalized explanations for things. This also makes it easy to update things with any changing information which does happen often. Instead of spending however long typing each section from scratch, you can just copy and control V to paste into your chat window to get all of the info out as fast as possible. This also leaves time for any questions before the event starts. Keep in mind that the chat window does have its limits, so break down whatever copy pastas you have into smaller sections for easier info dumping. Make sure to keep whatever information you have as clear and concise as possible. Too much, too fast, and too wordy may just confuse everyone. 4. Do I just type or do I advertise a Discord to join? This will depend on what content you're running. It's extremely common for world versus world commanders to want most if not all of their squad to join their Discord channel. You don't have to talk, but it greatly helps if you can hear tactics and what the commander is saying in real time so they don't have to type on top of that. If it's guild missions, it can be pretty 50-50. Some guilds require it, some guilds just have it as a place to talk while you're doing guild missions. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide what's best to get the information needed out there. Just remember it may be a pain to try to do an even amount of both at the same time. This is another thing lieutenants are great for. 
5. Don't let trolls or backseat commanders get to you. These kinds of players aren't super common, but they do pop up the more you command. More often than not, these are just people that either don't have a tag or don't have the guts or even knowledge to lead that content in the first place. If you explain the hows and whys of what you're doing, players will know what to do despite a backseat commander giving possibly completely wrong information. Ignore them if you can and let the squad know what's going on. They'll usually just follow the tag anyway. 6. Keep it civil and in good taste. If something does happen, try to be as calm as possible about it. No one likes hanging around a negative commander that just starts fights with everyone they possibly can, either just to seem edgy or because they can't help it. Banter is fun. Angry toddlers throwing their toys at each other are just fun to make fun of. 7. If you pop onto a map with a public tag already up, make sure you don't have the exact same tag if you're new to the map or you're just tagging. This helps avoid confusion for anyone on map and in your own squad. If you have to change colors, make sure your squad is aware of what color you've changed to. Even the most attentive players can accidentally follow the wrong tag if they're used to a certain visual indicator. We've all broken one or two of these semi-unspoken rules at some point, by the way. Some of these are etiquette, and some of these are just tips I found extremely handy over the years. Just do your best. Keep a mental note of any of the commanders that have really stuck out to you as a player. What helped, what hindered, and what engaged you? Who do you remember and why? Being a commander can be largely unappreciated, but the squads that do appreciate you and make it fun often leave a positive impression. I still have mail from players from previous squads that I will either never get rid of or have screenshots of on my computer. It feels like a you did good badge and it keeps me tagging up. Congrats! You know everything you need to know about the commander tag now. Go out there and show off that shiny new toy. Like what you see? Want more guides or even in and out of game chaos? Consider subscribing and if you want to catch me live, come see me on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday late night. Links are in the description below.